Now, how do we instantiate these bullets? We have to deal with the player script. So I'm going to open it right now. We just have this little message here that says fire when you click, but we need to have a reference for the bullet's prefab. To make that reference in Unity, we can only make a very simple public variable here. So at the top, I'm going to type public game object bullet prefab, like this. Okay. And if you save that and go to Unity, and you wait a little bit for that uh, processing of the code to be ready, and you select the player, you see that we now have that bullet prefab set here. Okay. So to get that bullet prefab to work, we're going to open the prefabs folder, and I'm going to drag this bullet from here to here. So you just drag and drop, and it's going to be in this position. Now that we have the reference for the bullet, you're going to notice that bullet prefab is set in bold. This is happening because that's something new that wasn't present or wasn't set in the prefab. And remember, this prefab, if you choose select, you're going to reference the EFPS controller. So this is the moment that we have to fork things a little bit. Okay, We want our player to be our own player prefab, our own first person controller, where we're going to add new things. This is important because if you make other levels, then you need to ensure that the player is going to behave the same on every level. And if you change the player, maybe you, you change the player's weapon, then there might be some differences from each level because, well, we can forget things. That's, we're only human. So now we're going to open the prefabs folder. And just like we did with the bullet, we're going to drag and drop the player here. Okay, and now we have the player, which is basically, oh, it's gone. Okay, it's the only visual element that we have here. And now, how do we instantiate these bullets? There's a very simple method for that. I'm going to remove this fire message from the update message, the update method, and I'm going to type game object bullet prefab equals to instantiate bullet prefab. This method is enough for adding a prefab instance. If it was only set as this, and you ran your project, it was going to work. But we want to keep a reference to it, and you're going to understand later. And instead of calling this bullet prefab, I'm going to name this bullet object. Okay, it's the instance of the bullet prefab. So let's use this pattern here, bullet object. So I'm going to save that, go to Unity, wait just a little bit, and if we press play now, here we are. If we click, the bullet is going to be instantiated. So if you look at the hierarchy, every time I click, a new bullet is added here. But there is a problem. All the bullets are in this position, okay? which is odd, why they're coming here. This is happening because the prefab, uh, the way you save it, so even the position is going to be preserved. So when we instantiate a bullet, we want to add it to a certain position. So what we can do here is we can type bullet object dot transform dot position equals to transform dot position. What is this? We are accessing the bullet object that we just instantiated. We access the transform component and we change its position to be the same position of the player. Okay, so writing this is the same as typing this, which is the player script that you're dealing with, dot transform dot position. But you can just leave it like this. Now this time if we save and go back and we give this a try, we can press the play button. Okay, so here we are. And if we click, it's going to be where the player was. Okay, so basically, if I click, it's going to be where I'm standing. Okay, which is good. However, we have if we click, we need to step back for well, for us to be able to see the bullet. So that's something that we have to adjust as well. And one thing that you might want to do is to make it spawn right in front of the player. Okay, so we're going to type here a plus sign and type transform dot forward. So what happened here? We're setting the bullet's position to be where the player is standing plus transform dot forward. And there is an interesting difference between these two values here. This is a vector three element. Okay, it's, it's an, an uh, uh, well, uh, a structure in Unity, a class in Unity, that contains three values, x, y, and z, so you can position things. And this is basically a point in space. It's a place, basically. This one is also a vector three, but however, this is basically, you have to think of this as a direction, okay? It's a vector, uh, and its size is going to be one. Okay, imagine there is an arrow that is going to point somewhere, so upwards, downwards, to the left, to the right, 
and its size is always one because this is going to make our calculations easier. But the thing is, this is not a place in space. It's an arrow that is pointing somewhere. So if we look to the left, transform.forward is going to point to the left. If we look up, transform.forward is going to point up. So this is basically what we need. This means that the bullet is going to be at the exact place where the player is, plus one unit in the direction the player is looking at. So now, if we try that again, if we wait that to wait for the compilation to be finished and we press play, this time if I click, the player is going to be one unit in front of the player, okay, which is great. However, you see that it's still not in a good position, okay, it's not exactly uh, where we are looking. So if you go to the scene and you select the player, okay, the player is going to be here, you're going to see that the player is in this position. However, the first person character is in this position, so it's there is a little offset, a little vertical offset. So it's going to be important for us to have a reference to the player's camera, okay, which is here in the first person character. So what we're going to do is, we're going to the player, I'm going to type here public camera, player camera, okay, and now instead of using transform.position and transform.forward, we're going to use player camera dot transform dot position and player camera dot transform dot forward. Okay, it's important for you to see this difference. It's just how the structure of the first person character was made. Okay, we have the player game object here, but we have the camera, which is the first person character here. Now we select the player and we're going to drag the first person character from here to here. So we're going to be able to reference its camera. And since we changed the prefab, we can hit the apply button for it to be saved. Let's give that another try. We're going to press play. Here we are. If I click, the bullet is going to be in front of me. If I look up or I look down, it doesn't matter. It's going to be in front. And the other thing that we might want to adjust is, if you look at the scene window, the bullet is very far, uh, the weapon is very far away from where the player is. This is happening because the gun is basically too big. So we want to make it very uh, much smaller than it is right now because we're going to have some issues where we look at the uh, at a, a bullet and the weapon is going to be in front of it so that's a bit odd now we're going to select the gun here and to make that simple we can just scale it so maybe I'm going to change that to 0 0.3 on X Y and Z and you're going to notice that it's scaling the elements uh, right below it in the hierarchy okay which is exactly what should happen because we have a hierarchy here Okay, now the gun is very far away from the player and to help you, you can just go to the game window, select the gun and you can click on these letters, okay, X, Y and Z and basically drag them around until you find a good position for the gun. Okay, so I'm going to make it closer to the player like this. I think, well, this is going to work well. And if you look at the scene now, the camera is much, the gun is much closer to the first person character. We might need to adjust a little bit, but well, we just have to experiment and see if things are working well. Okay, so maybe a little bit closer to the player. I'm going to change that scale to 0 0.25 on X, Y, and Z. Bring it closer like this. X comes to the left as well and Y moves up. So it's going to be better, okay? But well, I think this is good enough. It's, we don't have to worry too much about this because the bullets are going to move, okay? So now we're able to spawn bullets. They're not going to be very far away from, from the gun. It's going to be okay. But now we have to make these bullets to move forward, okay? Because we are shooting them. So how do we do this? We already learned how to use transform.forward. So we want to use this uh, to make the bullets to move in the correct way. So what we're going to do here is type bullet object dot transform dot forward equals to transform or better yet, player camera dot transform dot forward. This is very important here because it's going to make your life much, much easier if you, because otherwise we would have to calculate the angles. That's not necessary at all. We just set the forward vector, just like we did with the position, to be the same forward vector as the player camera. So it's going to point to whatever the player is looking at. And with that in mind, we can now go to the script of the bullet so scripts folder, double click on bullet to make it open and we can make a logic for it to move and that is going to be very simple. We can simply come here and type public float speed and I'm going to define that as 8F by default. Okay, this is a floating point number so we add an F here 
And in the update method, we are going to make the bullet move. So I'm going to simply add a comment here and that's going to say, make the bullet move. And we're going to type transform.position plus equals transform.forward multiplied by speed multiplied by time dot delta time. So what happened here? When we type transform.position plus equals, it means we're going to increase the position by passing another vector as a parameter. Okay, another uh, structure, another vector structure as a parameter. And what is going to be that? It's going to be transform.forward, so it's going to be an arrow that is going to point somewhere. That means our position is going to have an offset of 1, because every direction has a size of 1, but we're going to multiply it by speed, so we're going to increase that forward vector, it's going to be bigger or smaller, and we also multiply by time dot delta time, so we make sure that the game is going to behave more or less the same in different devices. We do that because we are in the update method and faster devices call the update method more times, more frequently than slower devices. So we use the time dot delta time here to scale that correctly. Okay. Now we're going to save, go back to Unity, wait a little bit, and after that is done, we're going to press play, and here we are holding our weapon. If we click, then the bullet is going to move forward. Okay, which is good. Uh, you notice that it comes from the middle, so it might be a little, uh, a little bit odd, uh, because we might want it to come from the weapon. But that's something very, very small. It's barely noticeable if you select the bullet and you increase the speed. So, for instance, we can stop the scene, change the speed to 20, for example, and if we press play now, no need to recompile the code. We can still shoot the bullet forward. Okay, which is going to work just fine for us. However, you notice that the bullet is lasting a lot of time here. Okay, the bullet basically exists forever, and this is going to to span very, very important memory, very important resources from your game. So, if you have a hundred bullets in your game, all of them are moving forward, so all of them are going to use space in memory. So we have to adjust that. What we can do for the bullet is to add a lifetime to it. So we can come here in the bullet and type public float lifetime or we can name this as uh, life duration for example and set that to be something like 2f so it's going to last for two seconds and now we need a private variable private float and we're going to name this as life timer okay this is going to basically store for how long uh, it's going to be the internal clock for the bullet that is going to count now and once it reaches zero we get rid of the bullet Okay, and now we have this start method here, so we're going to use it and we're going to type life timer equals to life duration. Okay, and in the update method, we're going to check if the bullet should be destroyed. Okay, and to do that, we're going to type here life timer minus equals time dot delta time. So if life timer holds three, and we decrease time dot delta time in the update method, it's going to work exactly as the seconds pass, exactly as time passes. And we have to check if life timer is lesser or equal than 0f, it means it's time to destroy it. So we can simply type here destroy and pass game object as a parameter, which is the same as typing this dot game object, which is the same as referencing the bullet that is running this script. Now we can save this, go to Unity, wait for the processing to be finished and now we press play so here we are holding our weapon if we click a bullet is added okay but apparently the lifetime still not working and yes they they disappeared so let's see what's the default value that we have here uh, life duration is set to two we set life timer to be life duration so yes they should last for two seconds so i'm going to press play zero one two and the bullet disappears on the hierarchy Okay, so since the bullet travels really fast, we might want to change that duration. Instead of 2, we might want to use 0 0.7, for example, whatever you think is going to be better. Uh, but anyway, the lesser, the, the smaller the lifetime, the, 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 the shorter is going to be it's the duration where the bullet's going to be alive, and well, you're going to use uh, your memory in a better way.